Hola, hello, and namaste, folks. I am your host, Sukriti, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Tagib podcast on leveraging machine learning and the scalability of cloud within cybersecurity. Folks, enterprises are rapidly adopting cloud technologies, resulting in a huge number of enterprises' applications and uh, use cases moving to the cloud based system. Uh, however, the legacy of the on-premise uh, security controls are insufficient to secure the cloud environment as their single source of truth ideology is incompatible with modern single sign-on identity systems and applications that span multiple clouds. Now, when we talk about the machine learning, which can be leveraged to uh, monitor, analyze, and uh, you know, look at the security events to detect and prioritize malicious activity uh, within a faster mean time to detect, uh, now, the advanced analytics is something that uh, actually comes into the picture and can be used to correlate on-premise data sources and cloud-based uh, data together for increasing end-to-end -end visibility across the entire IT environment that we're talking about. Now, here the best approach to tackle modern threats is leveraging the scale and the power of the cloud combined with the new data science and artificial intelligence models. That being said, for today's conversation, I'm delighted to have Kesad Wanskuiwala the Director, Cyber Threat Detection and Analytics from Securonix. Welcome to the show, Kaisat. Hey, Sukriti, thank you. Great to be on the show. Uh, so on today's topic, uh, the reason you know why we're talking about this uh, important uh, uh, topic uh, is mainly because first, uh, enterprises are scaling uh, with a massive you know amount of data. They're migrating to the cloud. They're operating on a large, much larger scale compared to what they were in the past. And beyond that, at this point of time, specifically, cybersecurity is not uh, the problem that it used to be. It is a board level problem at this point. And because of that, all organizations are answerable, not just to their shareholders, they're answerable to the government, to the people that use their services, and ultimately legislative and privacy requirements dictate that cybersecurity is the need of the hour and has to be prioritized uh, with you know, a more uh, focused approach. And that's the reason why you know machine learning and other aspects need to be combined uh, with the large scale of data coming in uh, to provide robust detections on the threat side. All right. So, Kesat, okay, so you've given us uh, you know uh, the right context and uh, the the primary stages set for our conversation today. Uh, to start with, I would like you to help us understand what type of data application and processing strategy would be recommended to stay relevant in today's time? Sure, so in today's time, uh, what we have seen is last 10 years, organizations were slowly migrating towards the cloud. There will be some applications that are still required on the cloud, some applications that are required to be on-prem and therefore a hybrid uh, strategy with some data uh, still hosted on-prem uh, would be required where you, know, you have uh, more robust controls on privacy, more robust controls on the data that you're monitoring. But at the same time, you will still need the processing power of cloud, the scalability that cloud offers, and you will still need to adopt those technologies. So those technologies are also evolving. Cloud providers like AWS, GCP, et cetera, will evolve as well to make sure that the cost is not too inhibitive uh, to ensure that more and more customers and more and more data uh, are being uh, pushed to the cloud as well. So it will be kind of like a hybrid approach as well as you know uh, a multi-cloud strategy where you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket you don't want to completely rely on something like aws you want to uh, disperse it out between aws gcp and azure uh, microsoft azure as needed all right and uh, you know since we have set up a little pretext and you being the expert of uh, cyber threat detection and the whole analysis uh, here uh, help us understand what kind of threats are associated with the cloud and critical infrastructure in general sure so in terms of uh, typical threats associated with the cloud uh, it's kind of the same types of threats that we had seen uh, almost 15 20 years back uh, when uh, cyber security became a topic of interest as well wherein uh, you have data that data is being misused or abused you have data that's uh, now available to everyone on the internet if they have the right credentials so you need to make sure that wherever you store your data on the cloud or wherever it is, those uh, devices, those kind of uh, buckets or objects are securely situated and secured in a way that uh, the permissions are uh, maintained that no one else other than your organization uh, should be able to access those uh, specific objects. 
so that's where you know uh, some of the incidents lie where uh, unauthorized access to your critical data uh, is one of the most common things on the cloud and on the cloud again everything is based on you know uh, a specific uh, object called as the control pane meaning if you have access to control certain devices you can basically control anything how the device operates what's stored on it who has access to it so that becomes another area where uh, you need to secure your identity and access management the roles and the permissions set aside for each of these objects for each of these devices and for the controls in general so that's you know one of the key areas that would uh, you know uh, be the threats that would be associated with cloud all right uh, since we have, we are actually talking about the threats there must be some challenges that uh, you know the businesses and the companies in today's time must be facing so uh, what are the challenges that you think, of course, uh, the businesses are facing that you would want to point out uh, when it comes to the cloud monitoring, uh, Kesar? Sure. So this is not just limited to cloud monitoring, but just holistically as well. Uh, when we, at this point of time, we have more and more data being pumped in, we're seeing that there are so many more alerts coming in. So what used to be uh, data in the millions, now it's commonplace for data to be in the billions or even, you know, uh, terabytes and terabytes of data on a daily basis. So because of that, uh, the reason uh, of this high number of uh, alerts or high number of uh, high amount of data is mainly because you're consuming a lot of data, you're storing a lot of data. You have you know, something from your machine, your system itself that's generating a lot of data. You have email data coming in, you have authentication related data, you have uh, you know, other such data on the network as well, your firewalls and other devices. So all of that translates to billions or even trillions uh, of data, depending on how large your organization is. Now with this large data set, uh, you have those many different devices, security solutions that generate alerts. So on a daily basis, you have thousands or even millions of alerts being generated because of all this data being pumped in. So at the end of the day, uh, how are analysts or security experts supposed to prioritize these incidents? So that's you know one of the key challenges and uh, an area that can help uh, you know prioritize this is basically leveraging machine learning or some kind of analytical approach to identify, prioritize, and risk rank what is important to your organization, and ultimately those should be the ones that you start your incident triage process. Okay. Uh, also, Kesat, you know a lot of uh, stir is there in the market of the AI and ML use and the approach that is actually being utilized in the market. How can uh, you know an AIML based approach enable security in general? Yeah, so uh, right now in this uh, you know a day of chat GPT and generative AI, uh, it's kind of the talk of the town where most organizations want to adopt some uh, structure around uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. Uh, currently, uh, only probably a few uh, industry players are actually working towards an application to these technologies but it'll still take some time to build these applications out to get to a point where uh, you're able to leverage the expertise of someone that has uh, cybersecurity domain expertise and to apply that same skill set with a data science model uh, at the back end. So basically you need uh, an expert to kind of translate all the knowledge that they have into something that is called as tokens that uh, will be uh, understood by this machine learning algorithm, and then ultimately leverage that uh, to automate what your response would be like. So I'll, until you know that's something that's mainstream, and at the same time, you see security embedded into this devices as well. So with chat GPT and with other uh, such technologies, we saw that they were not as secure as we would have expected it, which is why enterprises especially will be a little bit reluctant uh, to take the plunge into these types of technologies. So they, probably may want to develop their own version of this technology. So that's the reason why until there is a mainstream product that is secure and that's able to answer to at least some of these key challenges that we just talked about, uh, we won't see a direct application there. And I think uh, once we do see that, it will definitely help a lot uh, in terms of triaging. Uh, it will help the analysts in terms of how to respond to these cyber threats and cut down a lot of the mean time to respond. All right. And uh, any other best practices that you would want us to, you know, what you to share for securing the cloud and the ones that general users should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. So on the cloud or even otherwise, I think uh, the core 
tenants of security or the core best practices have remained the same uh, over the last uh, few decades as well. You have, firstly, on the authentication and authorization side, now you have something as, uh, called as SSO or MFA or even IAM uh, based technologies uh, or PAM based technologies that are available. So you need to secure first how your users are authenticated because you know everyone is accessing data from anywhere in the world. You need to secure what they have access to. So basically have robust controls over what they access, how they access it, and ultimately set predefined roles such that they don't have uh, permissions more than what they require uh, to fulfill their current responsibilities. So that's the core of it, mainly because uh, IAM and SSO will be where you access the data. Then once the data is accessed on the other side, on uh, especially on the cloud, it's all about the object and the instances, which means that you know the machines that you use to uh, generate uh, your ultimate output on the cloud, your instances as they are called, or it could be the data itself, or it could be the object, whatever that's called. So at that uh, uh, standpoint as well, you need to ensure that the permissions and how these objects interact with each other are also controlled. You need to monitor those aspects and ensure that those don't have more than required permissions to fulfill their requirements as well. So meaning, uh, just take an example, you have a device that's supposed to say, process some credit card transactions. That should not be the same device that accesses your customer data as well uh, to you know store uh, personal identifiable information. You need to have clear delineation. You need to have clear security, and more importantly, you need to have a proper key encryption and key maintenance as well on the cloud. So those are some of the common best practices that you know uh, we would recommend mainly because uh, it would ensure that as long as you're auditing and ensuring that. Uh, the objects and the permissions assigned to these objects and the users that uh, or accounts that access these objects are secured and structured in a way that your organization needs, uh, it should ultimately lead to a more hygienic uh, security practice. All right. Is that I think uh, some very, very useful and handful of uh, insights and uh, tips you've shared with us. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better conclusion to the show. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much, Sukriti, for having me. Thank you. Audience, listeners, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, hope, you know, whatever Kisat has shared with us in terms of the approach, in terms of uh, the general usage and the best practices, uh, you know, are, are useful for you. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in once again. I'll be back with another podcast very soon. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you so much.